Hello everyone, Dan the 14th Prime here. I want to share with you today a review of the Hot Toys Star Wars Boba Fett Movie Masterpiece Series 313. This is the Deluxe Edition with the Sarlacc Pit, which you can see there on the front of the box. Picture of Boba, kind of with the pit wrapping around him. We got the two-tone black with the Star Wars emblem on the front. Across the sides, they're just keeping that two-tone black flow. And around the back, there is also just not much going on with a lot of the fine print. So let's pop this guy open and check this bounty hunter out. Let me give you a, a little flavor for the layering of the packaging. There's this very cool artwork insert beneath the front cover of the box. It's got several pics of Boba in action. Very cool piece of print. Then you go one more layer behind the artwork, and there you've got Boba. First tray set in with all the accessories, his jetpack, his hands, many knives, etc. And then if you want another layer into the trays, you've got the Sarlacc Pit Deluxe Stand sitting behind that. So let's unpack all this. Here's Boba. Let's take a quick spin around the figure and wide angle look before we start to equip him and get in closer. You can see here from the front, he's looking exactly like the movie. Really, really nicely done. Spin him around to his right side and start to see some of these details that we'll go in closer on. Some of the strings, kind of ties hanging off his shoulder. You start to see the cape coming around the back. Here you got the back of the figure, some nice detailing on the back of the helmet. You got this cape piece coming around, which I haven't started to tinker with too yet, but it's got some posability. We'll see. Then here on his left side, a lot more cape visible. Tough to see on that shoulder, but the Mandalorian logo on the shoulder pad there. Really, really cool. Let's go in a little closer here. You start to see the really, really nice work on the helmet and the armor, the chest armor. You can see it does have the range finder sticking up there, and that does articulate down 90 degrees, so you can put it like that. It is delicate. Just be careful with it, but it does have that articulation. And let me just give you a little bit of a better look here at the helmet. Let's give him a little spin each way. I mean, that is just so cool. All the nicks, all the battle damage, the weathering, the colors. Looks super, super good. Very nice detail on that helmet piece. Really helps make the piece. Very, very cool. See up here, he's even got a little dent in the helmet. And let's just kind of take a spin down. You can see a lot of that weathering effect. Here's kind of these bounty hunter string sort of accessories. Keeping count of something, come on down. He's got the belt, the belt does not come off. The instructions say to watch that. You gotta watch the gauntlets too and how they'll rub with the hands, so watch that. Same with the knee pads and the knee articulation. It is a 12 inch figure, so let's just go ahead and jump halfway down so we don't get such steep angles on the pan. You can see the pants, really nice detail. It's got the pockets there on the thighs, the knee pad pieces. And below that, he's got a bunch of pockets where we'll put in some extra accessories, knives and different things. And then the boots, the shoes are really cool. I've never really paid much attention to his boots, but you can see there's a lot of nice detail there, a two-tone sort of gray color, some interesting points coming off of the toes as well. Let's do a pan down his left side. Again, another shot there just fixed of that helmet. Can't get enough of that, looks really cool. Here's how the cape starts to come into the shoulder. Let me just pull the cape away a little bit here so you can see the Mandalorian logo there on the shoulder, which is really cool. Then we'll just continue down the figure. Let's take a pause here at the form. You can see some really nice detailing on that gauntlet and the weaponry that they've done there is really, really nice. Then we'll come the rest of the way down. And again, because this is a 12 inch figure, I'll go ahead and hop down so you can take a really good look at that form piece into the glove, which looks really good. There you can see the side of that knee pad accessory a little bit better down into how they kind of wrap the pants around the top of the boot and it gets into that high top boot. All really cool. 
So here we've got the back of the figure. Take another good look at that helmet, which is really cool from the back. You start to come down, that's where the backpack will go. You get the cape a little bit in the way, I'll just pull that aside. That's what his back looks like before the jetpack goes on. It's got some hooks there, and a magnet in the center is gonna hold that nice and tight. And then you just have some of the connectors there for his belt, kind of accessory belt that is not to be removed down into the back of his pants and knees. And we'll just keep doing this kind of two-stage pan to make sure that you get a good look at everything. Here's the right side of the figure. I'll show you one more time. Just the rangefinder articulation. Just comes straight down there. Lines up perfectly with the visor, the eyesight. Really well done. Then if you just come down the figure, you'll notice no logo there on that shoulder pad. It's got those kind of string bounty hunter detailing going on there down into the gauntlet with the gauntlet you can see a lot of cool detailing going up into the suit like it's kind of feeding weaponizing down into the uh, the arm piece so that's really cool and we'll be nothing if not consistent here to jump down and let you get a better look at things more straight on got this big hip pouch behind his arm there as well which you can see better from this angle you can see the gauntlet weaponry a little bit better as well down into the glove so really really cool looking so let me just tick through the various accessories that he comes with and then we'll start to gear up boba he comes with two four five five extra hands including the two that are on him, which are basically closed fists. So this one here, obviously very, very important hand. It's going to be gun holding trigger finger for the rifle. So this will probably going to be one that's on the figure all the time because Boba with his rifle is going to be really, really sweet looking. So you get one of those on the right hand. You get two of these open hands, two of these kind of karate chop looking, salute looking, Closed fingers, extended thumb, left and right hand. You know, could be for kind of flying pose, something like that. And then you get two left hands that are similar, uh, just different degrees of openness. You can see these just really look good with the two-tone glove color. It's like gray, dark gray, and gray, light gray again and on the thumb like that. So all these hands are really, really nice looking. This one's got a little bit more of an open grip. Gonna be very handy for holding the other side of that rifle, no doubt. And then here is the other one. Again, a left hand, similar, but more closed, as you can see. So you get the thumb pinching down a little bit more than with this one. So this one will be good for probably holding some of his other accessories. You also get a number of small knives, weapon accessories that um, go into his bottom of his pants below his knee. So here's one little knife accessory. Here you have another one. This does not articulate. I was thinking it might open and close in some way, but that is not the case. He comes with this machete looking piece, which has a big blade and looks like some kind of wrapped handle going on here. And then finally, he just has this small pole looking thing. And none of these accessories are described or explained in the instructions other than one is A, one is B, one is C, one is D. And they want you to put them in certain pouches in his shin. So in the instructions, they talk about equipping the tools and they have these small pockets below the knees here so the small pole here goes into the first pocket on the right leg this big blade looking thing that looked like it might articulate goes in here it does not articulate like i mentioned and it looks like you want to put that skinny side down actually the machete looking blade here will go in his left pocket knee. And then this straightaway knife looking thing will go in the far left pocket. And there you have it. 
that's what his shin section looks like once you get all the tools in it. And I guess, you know, it's okay. I wasn't too keen on them at first, but they they do actually stick up a little bit and give a little bit of extra detail. Um, but it also probably makes you be extra careful with the knee pads and some of the posability as well. So be careful of that, but it does provide a little something extra. So getting back to the rest of the accessories, this is the jet pack. Got the really nice rocket up top. You got the two jet rockets here. Sorry, here coming out the side. So you can see a lot of nice detail. Kind of that blue, green, orange, red, white, silver on here. Just a lot, a lot of colors. Really good detail and paint. Really nice wear effect. Very well done. And importantly so, I mean, such a key piece, such a key piece for Boba. You can see even some red accent paint up here. So that just looks really, really nice. Couldn't be happier with that. And you spin it around, you know, and they even put some detailing on the inside here, which is just, you know, unnecessary, right? It's going to be facing his back. But you've got the hooks here and there's a magnet here, and that's how we're going to attach it. So again, let's go ahead and put the jetpack on. You can see the two hooks up there coming off the shoulders. And you've got two hooks obviously here on the pack. So here we've got the jetpack on his back. It's a little cumbersome. My advice is go ahead and do it one clip at a time and slide it all the way up in the clip and it will actually hold in there and then try to get the other one. It's difficult because it's a tight area and it's hard to get your hands in there, but one at a time, you can get it in there. So that's the jetpack on his back, looks really, really good. And now let's just slide down and put in the rocket engine effects while we're here. I believe this is also a special accessory to the deluxe edition set where you can get the uh, jetpack to look like it's firing. So those just plug right into the bottom, nothing too special. And voila, we have the jetpacks firing out. And I'm always a little skeptical of kind of molded plastic fire effect. It doesn't always look good. This actually looks really, really good. There's some different kinds of tone through that plastic. You can see darker red into lighter, kind of from the top down through into the end. So I think that looks really sharp. I'm definitely going to keep that on because I'm going to go for an aerial pose flying over the Sarlacc pit. All right, and last but not least, the rifle, which is super, super cool. You can see a lot of nice detail there. It's really cool. It almost looks like a long pistol here with a stock just sort of welded onto the back. I never really noticed that before. It's got a nice long scope there. You got a really nice metal color here with some wear. It's kind of gunmetal gray, looks really good. And back into here, you get you know, a little bit of a of a brownish. It's probably hard to see. It's it's not like a brown brown, but you definitely get a little bit of a different tone here. And there's like a wood grain effect going back into the back of the butt of the gun. Really, really cool. We'll just flip it around the other side so you can take another look. This is kind of the money accessory, right? Big, big deal, and I think they did a really, really nice job with it. So of course I've swapped out the hands to get ready for the gun, and we'll just slide this in. You kind of put the thin piece through the thumb area there, and then just slide it back into the hand. Goes in pretty well. Put the trigger finger right through the hole. Beautiful fit. And there you can see I just slid that into that open left hand. So here I've went ahead and put him in a gun pose with that wider open hand where you can see how he can hold the end of the barrel in the left hand. And here I've went ahead and put that flatter left hand on and done that Return of the Jedi when Leia brings Chewbacca sort of pose. And I will just say as I've been moving this guy around that jetpack is a pain in the butt. It pops off a lot if you bump it up. It's really, really hard to get on there, so have a pair of tweezers handy. You're going to need tweezers. 
even with tweezers, it's difficult, but that's probably your best bet. Okay, so let's move forward into the stance here really quickly. We'll get this guy ready to go in his kind of final posing resting place, but this is what I'd call the, the stock stand, if you will, a standard base stand that he'd come with. Uh, that's quite consistent with all the other Star Wars figures uh, from Hot Toys that we've seen, so it's got the great effect on it. He's got a, a, a red tin up there, the nameplate that says Boba Fett. I'm not even really bothering to unwrap it. And of course, you got the stand here that you could lock in there and give some posing support like so. So that's an option, but not the one I'm going with. Because the Deluxe Edition comes with this really, really cool Sarlacc Pit diorama base. Some people might not love the fact that it's kind of remastered Return of the Jedi Sarlacc Pit because it's got the little nose of the guy down there. You know, I'm indifferent towards that. I think the main thing is it's got the look, it's got the effect, it's got the big uh, tentacles coming up, which you can pose, and it's got a nice kind of effect around it. So I think it's really cool. So when you come in closer, you get a better look at that detailing. You know, it's all pretty traditional. It's got the normal sort of teeth effect here, tentacles, and you know, and, and that's the piece that's digitally remastered Return of the Jedi. So, you know, not perfect if you don't love those, but all in all, I think the base is really, really good. You have these arms, these three tentacles, which are posable, so they come straight in the box, and you just screw them in down here at the bottom of the base. And then you're free to pose those around. They bend just like a lot of the uh, the poles there, the black pole at the back, which is the dynamic posing pole. Way, way up there, you'll see eventually you get to the hook for the figure. You know, it's a good three or four inches above the highest point, at least where I have bent, of tentacle. So I think that's really cool. And considering this is, I think the deluxe was like 20 bucks extra, something like that. Um, you know, it's definitely worth 20 bucks, I think. No disintegration. And here you can see Boba Fett next to the Hot Toys New Hope Darth Vader, just for a scale comparison. Feels about right. Comes up to around Vader's shoulder. Vader's probably something around a 14 inch figure, whereas Boba's looking something like 11 and 3 quarters inches. So I think pretty good scale. So that's the Hot Toys Return of the Jedi Boba Fett guys. Really pleased with the figure. Really, really fantastic. Very happy I made the purchase. I think the last thing I want to do here is get him posed up in his case and give you a look at that. So there you have it, guys. Hot Toys Boba Fett in his Final resting place for now. I've got him in a 20-some inch tall Legends lighted case. I had to turn the base sideways a little bit to fit him in there, so I was a little disappointed about that. But overall, I've got him in a nice aerial pose, and he's filling up that case really, really well. So pretty happy with it. Definitely liking the figure, and I recommend picking it up if you were giving it a look. So hope you liked the video, guys. I'll see you next time.